Today we're going to visit about bacterial blight of cotton. As the name suggests, bacterial blight is caused by a bacteria and not a fungus. So really fungicides are ineffective at controlling bacterial blight. Usually bacterial blight is going to make its appearance sometime around mid-season, uh, just prior to canopy closure. Uh, maybe when the cotton plant begins to set some fruit and you begin to see them, some of the lower leaves um, really putting all their energy into making the filling out a cotton bowl. Uh, bacterial blight is also called angular leaf spot of cotton and so you'll find first blocky shaped lesions um, in between the veins on cotton plants. Um, once the disease begins is established then it progresses and you'll see these black veins that uh, form on the underside of the leaf. Also bacterial blight can infect uh, squares and small bowls and so you'll first see the the lesions the blocky lesions again on the uh, bracts and once it attacks the the bowl what you'll begin to see is first a water soaked appearance to a lesion and then eventually it'll progress to where it looks like a, a cigarette burn or a round circle on one of the locks bacterial blight definitely can be yield limiting so one of the control one the best control measure is genetic resistance and all your phytogen white strike three flex and list varieties are genetically resistant to bacterial blight that's part of what comes with our breeding traits you can find scores for um, bacterial blight resistance from a lot of your universities for example i know arkansas and mississippi state both uh, publish bacterial blight ratings each year for for common varieties so begin to scout your fields around mid-season looking for bacterial blight resistance and remember that genetic resistance is the only way to combat bacterial blight. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact myself or your local territory manager.